Tbilisi or Tiflis modernism and avant-garde is a phenomenon which is still not evaluated properly in Georgian literature. Although without this period and this topos, we believe the map of European modernism and avant-garde will not be complete. However, the significance of these years for Georgian reality is not demonstrated clearly hitherto in Georgian literary studies and naturally in European literary studies too. Why are these years so significant and, on the other hand, quite forgotten even to the present day? The years of Democratic Republic of Georgia, 1918-1921, are certainly of special importance for the political and cultural development of the country. Actually, the modernist cultural processes in Georgia began even a few years earlier. They started not immediately in Tbilisi or Tiflis, as the capital of Georgia was called at that time, but in Kutaisi, the second largest Georgian city in western part of the country. A Georgian poets, the Blue Horners and Galaktion Tapidze, are recognized as the central figures of Georgian literature who started their activities in their early years exactly in Kutaisi. Grigol Rubakidze, too, who impart the main impulses to Georgian symbolism and modernism, after the years of European education, in Kutaisi gets acquainted with the young generation of future Georgian symbolists. However, the group became especially active after moving to Tbilisi. This is not accidental, as exactly in Tbilisi, beginning from 1917 and 1918, not only the political but also the cultural moods, cultural situation are changing. At the political level, the change of the Georgian reality is naturally determined by the dissolution of the Russian Empire. As a result of the revolution of February 1917, then the Bolshevik Revolution of October 1917, and the Civil War, uh, the Russian center lost its control over the peripheries of the empire. The country's nations, who had an ambition of becoming a nation-state, managed to take advantage of this interval of the Russian imperial control and established independent nation-states. Among them are the three countries of Transcaucasia, Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan, which were established one after another in May 1918 as a free nation-state after having for a few months a joint Transcaucasian Republic. On the cultural map of Georgia, creation of a nation-state is determined not only by the political processes, but above all by the spirit formed in the Georgian society and Georgian culture, the social and cultural activities carried out according to this spirit. The development of 1914-1918, the First World War, gave rise in Georgia to expectation of becoming a nation-state, the expectation that the Russian Empire would dissolve and a Georgian free state will be created. This is how Mikhail Javakishvili, the prominent Georgian prose writer, recalls the last meeting with Akaki Tseretelli in 1915. Akaki Tseretelli was the major figure of the generation of the 1860s who really changed the social and cultural atmosphere in Georgia by the time a part of Russian Empire. Akaki Tseretelli told Mikhail Javakishvili, perhaps in the world thunder the bell of our fate may begin to ring Perhaps when the common flame dies down, our candle may be lighted. From Akaki Tseretelli's words, it is clear that this generation of Georgian poets and public figures, the generation of the 1860s, considered not only as a logic of history that the Russian Empire would dissolve and Georgia as a nation-state would be established, but this was the main aspiration of their life, by means of which they made possible formation of Georgia as a free state and nation-state after the dissolution of the Russian Empire. Accordingly, not only the political moods, and I would say uh, not that much the political moods, but exactly the cultural and socio-cultural moods created the social reality, which made possible becoming a Georgia free nation of uh, European orientation.
And it is not accidental that at this point a young generation of artists appeared on the area of Georgian culture, poets, writers, painters, theater directors, and a little later film directors, who created the Georgian modernist culture as a continuation of the cultural processes directed towards Europeanization, modernization, started by the generation of the 1860s. In the period of existence of the independent Republic of Georgia, in the years of the first democratic republic, Tbilisi turned into a new cultural center, namely a modernist avant-gardist center. What may indicate that this is a cultural area created more exactly animated by the functions of a center. Above all, the fact that this area is attractive for Georgian poets who arrive from other cities of Georgia. First of all, from Kutaisi to Tbilisi to continue continue their activities, just as like it is attractive for poets and artists fleeing from the chaos of Russian Empire. These are the avant-gardist artists, as uh, this is the period of dominance of the modernist avant-garde aestheticism in the Silver Age Russian literature. It is obvious that the artists who arrive in Tbilisi are looking for a safe haven where they will take refuge uh, from the Russian Empire being uh, in turmoil from the civil war after the Bolshevik Revolution. Revolution. They arrive in Tbilisi firstly seeking to survive physically, but they will also survive as artists. In Georgia they begin partnership primarily with the Blue Horn poets, as well as with the Georgian society, who not only witnesses the creative searches, creative partnership processes, but also participate and contribute to them. It may be said that the Georgian society is a significant member of the Tbilisi modernist avant-garde topos, equally as the artists themselves. That is why researcher of Georgian modernism Harsha Ram notes that Tbilisi of that period is a bohemian space in which literature is performed, consumed and lived. What is unique in the topos of Tbilisi modernism and avant-garde? And on the other hand, what is the link with the major European cultural centers? What is the resemblance between them? Above all, the principles of presentation, use, performance of literature and the areas in which literature is presented to the society. Literary cafes. Several literary cafes which are created in Tbilisi at that time are the main places of gathering. First of all, the fantastic Tavern, an area created by the Russian avant-gardists, who after a certain period, with the efforts of the Georgian poets Blue Horners, will be substituted by Kimerioni Cafe. Who are the central figures of Tbilisi modernism and avant-garde? On the one hand, of course, Blue Horners, Georgian symbolists, Grigol Robakidze, Paolo Iashvili, Tizian Tabidze, Valerian Kaprindashvili. They participate in almost every literary soiree held in those years. And these are exactly multicultural events where Georgians and Russian poets and artists in exile simultaneously deliver up and perform and discuss, debate on aesthetic issues. It is very noteworthy that in this area the Georgian and Russian artists fleeing from Russia are so interrelated that the debates regarding political topics are not heard almost at all. Instead, heated debates are heard about artistic and aesthetic issues. Here modernism and avant-gardism, symbolism and Zaum are competing to establish their own ideas. Exactly against the background of this dialogue character, a special, unique Tbilisi cultural situation is created. Alexei Grochonik, Russian futurist poet and major figure of the Russian Zaum, in 1917, 1918 and 19 lives and works in Georgia and afterwards moves to Baku for a short period. He recalls the Tiflis period in his book and notes that up to 50 publications, books and journals were implemented under the name of the Tbilisi group of that period, 41 degrees. This is cooperation of the poets in exile from Russia and, on the other hand, Georgian avant-gardists. Ilya and Kirill Stanevich, born and raised in Tbilisi by a Georgian mother and Polish father, returned here after their university years from Russia. They rediscovered Tbilisi as an area of cultural and creative activity. By their participation in cooperation with Alexei Grochonik and Igon Terentiev, the group 41 Degrees is established, which is special in the 
history of Georgian as well as Russian culture. 41 degrees encompasses several meanings. In addition to the denoting the body temperature when a person becomes delirious and moves to the state of Zaum, as Alexei Grichonik stated, it is also the parallel on which our capital Tbilisi is situated. Hence, 41 degrees as a group in particular points to its relation to the cultural topos of Tbilisi. On the other hand, it indicates that it is a cultural area of universal poetry, universal avant-garde culture in which language, logic, thought, intellect leave their boundaries known to us and move beyond these boundaries, za umom, according to Alexei Gruchoni. On behalf of this group, as Gruchoni calculated, up to 50 books and publications were implemented in Tbilisi, but the group also continued its existence after the annexation and occupation of the Democratic Republic of Georgia, this time by Soviet Russia, Bolshevik Russia. The group continued its existence in the main center of European culture, Paris, owing to the activity of Ilyas or Ilyas Danievich, who migrated to Paris and did everything so that the main ideas, main principles and names of Tbilisi avant-garde may be resound in there. Tiflis modernism and avant-garde is a cultural moment which still needs to be returned to the area of present-day Georgian culture and needs to claim its place on the cultural map of European modernism and avant-garde.